Hi, this is Doc Mountain and welcome you to my channel. In our lesson today, we are going to look at an atom. So when we are done, you should be able to define an atom. You should be able to state the components of an atom and describe their properties. Without any further ado, let's jump into things. So an atom is actually defined as the smallest particle of an element that can take part in any chemical reaction. Now, that has always been given as the definition of an atom, though nowadays it's actually disqualified. It's disqualified in that an atom is not the smallest particle because it has other subatomic particles, those smaller particles that are found on the inside. The definition I've given you implies that this atom cannot further be subdivided into smaller particles. But if it can actually accommodate smaller particles, then it's not the smallest particle. So how then can we define this atom in a way that qualifies? Well, we can say an atom is one of the smallest particles of an element one of the smallest particles of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction now what are the components of this atom so an atom has what you call the nucleus which is located at the core of an atom so now on the inside of this nucleus so this is the one which is actually denoted by this x on the inside of the nucleus there are what we call the neutrons. So let's add four neutrons. So those are neutrons. Let me talk about these neutrons. Neutrons are actually neutral. They have no charge on them. Then they don't have any charge. They're neutral. And uh, they have the mass of one atomic mass unit. And they're located on the inside of the nucleus. Okay, let's move on to protons. Apart from neutrons, there are protons on the inside of the nucleus. Let's add four. So in this case, we have four protons. Protons are positively charged. They are located on the inside of the nucleus. They have the positive charge. And they have one they have the mass of one atomic mass unit. Now, those rings that you're seeing, the concentric rings are called the energy levels, or you can call them shells. Now, what is really found in the shells? in these shells accommodate the particles that we call the electrons so the first energy level accommodates the maximum of two electrons then the subsequent shells accommodate the maximum of eight electrons so if now we say we are going to put four Okay, two just in the outer shell. What it is is, what do you need to know is this? The number of protons on the inside of the nucleus is always equal to the number of electrons in the shells. So we had added four protons here. We've added four electrons. So now, by virtue of adding four electrons and having four protons, then an atom is actually neutral in nature in terms of charge because the negative charges cancel out with the positive charges. So there is a balance in charge. There is no charge which is greater than the other. Hence, an atom is actually neutral.
in nature. Now, if, if we happen to make one of these electrons flow onto the other, especially when you happen to make it, you know, take part in any chemical reaction, this one may lose its electron and uh, you, you're going to have an imbalance in the charges. There will be more positive charges as compared to the negative charges because there will be more protons than the electrons. Henceforth, this will actually become positively charged. When it becomes positive, positively charged, then it will be called an ion. So a charged atom is called an ion. Okay, so now I, I won't dig, dig deeper as in looking at the subtopics that are lie ahead. Let's now see if we can actually identify the element that may have such an electron or such such an atom rather that may have such a configuration as this one. So now we had looked at the periodic table and we said the periodic table will actually help us to locate the element in the in the periodic table. Okay. So now for this one, which is an atom, if we check, we are going to determine that there are two, two shells here. Now since it has two shells, then we can tell that this one is actually supposed to be in period two because the periods denote the number of shells that an atom has. Then when we check the valence electrons, the valence electrons are actually those electrons that take part in chemical reactions, those that are found in the outer shell. They are two. So this one actually is, is supposed to be in group two. So what we have is an atom of beryllium, and that one is found in, in group two and period two. Well, friends, thank you so much for watching the video. If you've liked it, don't forget to subscribe or follow me and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that the moment I happen to roll out any video you happen to be alerted this is doc mountain thank you so much